So I've just been given this by Stepson, who's this is also a computer power supply, and the power has been randomly shutting down and giving errors for being low voltage. So, and they it already purchased a, a new power supply, which is now waiting to arrive, and kind of forgot that I fix things. I, yeah, okay. Anyway, here's power supply. So let's pull the thing apart and see what's going on with it. Um, let's see where I'll get into it. There's a top cover there, so just like four screws on the top. There, which I need to try and get. There we go. Rather dusty, as you would expect. And coating the heat sink, so it's not good for airflow. It's a very flimsy casing. Um, capacitors. Well, those ones look okay. I'll have to test everything, obviously. These 200 volt caps. I'll pull this pull all thing apart and just put a new heat sink on everything, recap it. Uh, pass it down there, look okay. Nothing obvious yet. So it could just be an overheating problem because we've got this dust build up on heat sinks and things like that, so it could just be, you know, something like that. So we'll go from there. I'll keep on pulling it apart. So before we get started, I'm going to just check the voltages on his caps to make sure they're discharged. About 5 volts there. And about 1 volt that one. That's fine then. Let's just short them anyway. And any other big caps here? Let's worry about. So, a few little ones around the place. Yeah. Try and find one. There is that one. <laughs> yeah, it all seems to be pretty much discharged. So, I'm not too worried about that. Feel fairly safe touching it. Um, but yeah, you can see there's a lot of dust in here and stuff like that. So I'm just going to see if I can go around and test all these caps, sort them all out individually and test them all and uh, see if they all look okay or not. But visually, they look okay. I can't see any faults, at least not yet. Trying to see if anyone pushed up off the board because that has sometimes a clue about one failing, but nothing looks bad yet. No signs of any leakage or anything like that. But it doesn't mean it'll be good. So I shall do some testing. Well, I was going to start with testing these capacitors. So I've got the big ones over here first. These are unlikely to be an issue. Um, see what we get 0.28. APR on. Let's do um, capacitance series on the ESR. Yeah, 0 0.07 and 650 UF reported. And this one here, we'll get the thing to stay on. 0 0.07, 630 UF reported, and these are. 820 rated, but yeah. um, the ESR looks okay. Capacity looks a bit lower, but it's probably nothing. Uh, it's a little bit tricky trying to manipulate this thing because I like sitting in a box, but yeah. it's not the easiest thing to deal with. There we go. Let's try and do it this way. Alright, there's one over here.
2.2 UF looks like showing 15 ohms though which is looking a little bit high um, and it's rated as what we're seeing a go pretty quick isn't it? 2.2 UF so that's at least got the correct readings apart from ESR being a little bit on the high side it might be okay though it's a small cap that one's very similar also the same rating 2.2 UF there's one here. 0.6, 41 UF, so that's probably a I you can't even see what it is. 47. Yeah, okay. Another one just next to that. It's gonna be hard to get into all these, but down there. 0 03, 1700 UF, really? No, it's a thousand. I suppose there's a circuitry around it. Another little one just next to that. Just here. Ooh, 28 ohms, that looks interesting. And there's also some. Looks like flux around there. Maybe it's been an issue. So we look. Try and get it again. 20 ohms looks a bit too high. An 818 NF, 0.8 UF. Um, I'm very suspicious about that one there. Let's see if I can mark it. This one here. This one here. Right there. Alright. Let's keep going. There's a couple tucked down in between the heatsink and the coil just down there. If you can see them just there. So it's potentially heat damaged. So let's see what we get. 2.1 UF, 31 ohms. So it looks a bit high, doesn't it? And 37 ohms, 2 UF. So I'm also suspicious about these ones. I mean, all things being equal, they should be about 15, same as the ones over here. So, they're probably wrong. And they're probably going off value before they actually fail completely. There's one that's down there, which I need to test. Just there. 0.6, I think I might have done it on the same as that one. There we go, it's fine. Uh, there's nothing else around that side. In the middle one, so I've just got to do the ones along the top here now. Alright. I'll pause this and come back for a second. Just there my sinking to fix itself. Alright. Is it on there? 2 ohms, 8.6, this could be an 8.7 then. Can't actually see. Can't see what that is. It's hidden. But the ESR looks okay, so I'm not too worried. This one here. 2.2. That's not right. There we go. 0.02, 700. Looks like another thousand UF from the size of it. What else we got here? There's one there, one there. Quite a little bang going along here. Hmm. Can't read that one, which is interesting. Very interesting. Let's just mark that one as suspicious. Oh, there's another one next to it, just down there. 
can't read that one either. There may be a resistor or maybe even that inductor affecting it. Could be an inductor across there. Could well be actually. Yeah, there's inductor between those two. So it could well be an inductor that's causing problems there. Effectively a short across them. Yeah, possible. All right, I'll mark it anyway. Further investigation. Next. So I've got a bank of four just there. So let's see what we got. So there's two there. Zero ohms or zero point zero one seventeen hundred okay, it's about the same, so those are looking likely to be fine. Can't read that one again. There's another inductor just there, so it's like a parent, a mirror image of this side. There's inductor here and here, and looks of it. So it's not surprising those aren't readable. Yeah, it's a mirror. And there's one more just over here. And that also looks kind of okay. So there's a few there to check. Um, I think these are probably fine. But these other ones here and there get in shot. Yeah, so here and over here, I need to check. So let's pull them out and maybe just replace them, don't we? Alright, so let's start taking these out. Just going to check them one at a time. We'll see how lucky we get as far as <coughs> removing them. It's just single sided balls, they shouldn't be too bad. But, uh, it looks like it might be lead free solder, so it's always a bit of a pain for that kind of thing. Let's move my iron a bit closer. Right. I'll try and get in here and solve the problem, I think, with this one. One UF 50 volt, and that will measure fairly high, but it's only one UF, so it's probably okay actually. Let's just get this back in here. Try it again. Yeah, I mean, it's close. I'll just replace it anyway. Whilst it's out, I might as well just chuck it anyway. In. One UF fifty volt. So we get the thing back in there. It's gonna be tricky.
Now this one's down here, dodgy as well, or potentially dodgy. You run the office inductor, so it may be it's just effects from that, but being shoved right down next to a heat sink means they're likely to be affected by heat. So it's probably going to age them a bit more rapidly. So uh, I'm going to assume they're probably bad. So I'm just going to make sure that the orientation is correct. Um, I can see one of them. I think it's a negative each side, pointing outwards. So let's carry on with this. <laughs> 